To God be all the glory tonight, because my aunt don't told me, it's October the 27th, 2022. There is a blessing from the Lord right now. But we greet you in the name of, our, of the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Ghost from First Crown Ministry all the way from Benson, North Carolina. We are elated to be here on tonight. This is what we're going to call Bible study, but we're going to call it the flow on tonight because I'm like, Lord, I got too much in here, too much on me, and Lord, I don't know where to go. And it comes right back into what God has been saying to me for the last two or three days. My sleep kind of been interrupted. I kind of had some things and some thoughts and some situation on my mind. And the Lord gave me one word this morning at 4 a.m. Glory to God, I woke up like it was time for me to get up. And I'm like, Lord, what is this? And I think that I was coming out of a dream. And in that process of all that, uh, the Lord began to tell me this one word and the one word for today is surrender. Let us pray. Father God, we just give you glory on today and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for this day, for this is the day, Lord, that you have made, Father. And we are glad that you give us another opportunity to bless your name, to be in it, to sit in it, to see, to have activity of our limbs. Glory to God. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing by your spirit, Lord. Demute. <laughs> we thank you, Father for just moving. We thank you, God, for being God. We thank you, God, for showing us the will, the way, the word that you will have us to go, to see, to say. We thank you, God, for life, health, and strength, Father. We thank you, God, for just being God alone in our life. And Lord, we submit our life unto you, asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you have your will, your word, your way in our life, God, that you will not only, hallelujah, breathe the breath of life, life in us, God, but that you will use us, Lord, for your glory, that you will get the glory out of our life. And Father, we thank you for our family. We thank you for our friends, Lord. We even thank you for our enemy, God. And we ask, God, in the name of Jesus, that you cover them and that you keep them, Lord God, from hurt, harm, or danger. We thank you, God, that you keep them in safety, Father, safety in their mind, safety in their heart, safety in their spirit, Father. We ask, God, that you give us an observance in spirit, Lord, that we will know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, Father. And Father, we forever give your name honor, glory, and praise is due unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Woo, glory to God today. Because you know, the, when you begin to open up and begin to pray, it's like the Lord will begin to speak one thing and another thing. And sometimes it get me right tickled down in the basement of my soul because I know, glory to God, because when you have relationship, when you open up and you just begin to invite him in on whatever level you want, he come right in in that place, glory to God. And so it's like your mind, your heart, your spirit will open up and everything will begin to flood at one time. And you just sitting in a place like, woo, Lord, which way do I go? and how do I do this and how do I handle this but we got to know in this season it's time that we got to be open and sensitive to the spirit of the Lord and sometimes we have a uh, mission or a thing on our plan and it goes right back to this word still about surrender the word of the day is surrender so I woke up in the wee hours of the morning as I said and the Lord said surrender mm. And at the time of that, I was like, oh, Lord, I already knew it was something for me to investigate. I already knew it was something that he was going to release for me to say. But he began to flood in so much stuff. And then I began to research and I began to look up. And then I just had a whole bunch of notes. And I'm like, oh, Lord, where are we going to go today? And really, I do not know. But I will read this from what I looked up. And it says, surrender is a, is a battle term. It implies giving all rights to the conqueror. When an opposing army surrenders, they lay down their arms and the winner takes control from then on. Surrendering to God works the same way. God has a plan for our life and surrendering to him means we set aside our own plans and eagerly seek him. And so in that place of surrender, the Lord began to show me different things and I began to look up different things. But one thing that I began to look up and research and he said, um, 
that he showed me, I keep on saying he said, but he said it unto me, he showed it to me. He began to show me about Exodus 34 and 14. He said, you shall worship no other God for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Mm. And I began to research this and I'm like, my name is jealous. He said, jealous means he's intolerant of anything else going before him. And this means not only um, like, you know how somebody be jealous, and you're like, oh, they jealous and they just got this something, something on them and they act in a certain kind of way. That's not the same type of jealousy that the Lord is. In other words, he's saying anything that you exalt above his name, that he contending against that. In other words, in my mind, I was like, is that like a contend, like a fight against? It ain't like an argument or a quarrel that you would have with your brother or your sister or your neighbor. But the Lord opposes those things that's in your life that, that you have made a monument in your life and he said I'm still dealing with idols I'm still dealing with a heart issue and those things gotta come down he said whose name is jealous because he is a jealous guy and sometimes he began to show me how my personal life how you have gone and you have put this you have put that in other words for me it's time and time means a lot to me because it's just like I can like can we double the day and can we have 48 hours instead of 24 because I feel like that I need it it's like it's never enough time to accomplish what I feel like that need to be accomplished. It's never enough time. And before you can accomplish one thing, you got two or ten other things beckoning your time. And it's like, I can't even call it catch my breath. And the Lord was like, uh, this is what I'm going to deal with you with. I'm going to deal with you with time today. He said, I'm jealous over even your time and the time you spent. And it's funny because sometimes my husband say, listen, can I make an appointment to get on your schedule? Because, you know, you got this person, you got that, you got the other, and you're running and you're doing all this, he laughing, and you're doing all this, that, and the other. Can I, can you pencil me in? You know, you might have to erase, but can you just give me some time? And that's how sometimes that the Lord is seeing. It's amazing how time. Sometimes that when it's time for us to come together, we're trying to gather our notes. We're trying to gather everything. Like, Lord, I need you to speak a word. He said, no, if you set aside some time, you know, this is the thing about us. We're very religious, but we don't read our little Bible, you know, um, plan and we don't you know quote out a quote a few little scriptures this morning as we was getting ready as we was driving as we was doing this but the lord is still dealing with thou with setting aside quality time where there is no interruption of anything else he's and he began to say i need you to surrender in so many areas of your life and i was like i know if god's speaking that unto me he's speaking that to other people as well well we have made other things little bitty gods in our life glory to god and, and we begin to um you know sometime even in our prayer time we have prayed lord we pray for a job or we pray not to have a job or we pray that god will open up in our finances we pray that god will do all matters of things we pray that god will give us a house god will give us a car and god begin to bless us and give us those things that our heart has desired for us to have because one thing about us is it's not like he just did you know give me god give me god give me that he want to give us everything our hearts desire but he's a loving God and he does want to bless us with the things that we desire and the Lord even was dealing with me with this he was talking about the need of his people and just a couple of days ago and everywhere for the last couple of days I keep on hearing I'm coming to get I'm coming to visit the people because I'm going to bless the people where there's a need. And sometimes where our mind is said, oh, I need this car or I need this house or I need this man or I need this woman or I need this. And the Lord was saying, no, what you need is the spiritual things. Hallelujah. Because the spiritual things is what's going to open up the door. In other words, we're going to our scripture, what say what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and what is going to happen? and his righteousness. And then he said, and then all these other things will be added unto you. But sometimes the Lord allowed the blessings to come as we are supposed to be continuous in pursuit of him. But when the blessing comes, we stop at the blessing. I got to clean my house. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do the other. And then it's almost like we put him on a back burner and he's saying he's not going to continue with a house. He's not going to contend with a relationship one-on-one. -on -one. Even some of us mothers, we value these sons. We value our daughters. Let's get that clear as well. But you know, when they call, we'll start right doing what we're doing in the middle of time. But the Lord was like, he's calling us to a place of obedience 
that when we walk into the fullness of what he has called us into, when we surrender it to him, not only will we be able to have a relationship, but we'll be able to fulfill the call. And this is the thing that he began to say. He said, it's all about the call. And you know, it was like many are called, few are chosen. The difference in between those is obedience, the one who will obey what he say. And so in this time, he's saying, look, I'm trying to bless you. I'm trying to give you honor. I'm trying to take you from the place of do nothing and show you how how to produce, but in that you cannot leave me out of the equation. And so many times we're like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this, but we haven't seek the counsel of God. He said, I want you to surrender that. I feel in my spirit like a pulling, like a nudging, like a being in a tug of war where you got 10 people on that side and seven people on this side, but the majority of the weight is over here. So you pull and pull and pull and, but there's an opposing force pulling against you in the Lord, like who going to win, who you going to let win, who you going to surrender this thing to. In other words, who you yield to the most. That was another thing he was saying, what you yield to is what's going to control you. And sometimes I told you my sleep, I felt like it was being robbed. I had things on my mind, things on my heart, but yet the Holy Spirit was like, get up, get up, wake up. He was a, it was a nudging in my spirit to get up. Why? It's not because of what I had on my mind. It's because of what was in the basement of my spirit. Spirit. And what was the basement of my spirit is the fact that God was calling me to a place that my flesh did not want to go. And he was like, listen, I don't need you to surrender to your flesh. I need you to surrender to my will. I need you to surrender to my prayer time. I need you to surrender to the call. I need you to surrender to those things. Oh, you think those people on your job need you? No, they don't need you. You need to surrender. And I'm like, how do you balance it out? How do you, how do you put it all in the same basket? And how do you handle it out? How do we feel like it's so much success over here and unsuccess under there? He said it's based on the surrender. It's based on the balance. How do you get the balance? Surrender. Surrender to what? Surrender to God. We mean, you know, we surrender our prayer time, the little bit that we kill them. We surrender our reading, our devotion time. But then there's sometimes that he calls that nudging to come in that you be like, okay, in a minute, I'm going to do this. And even in that nudging, sometimes it's not all what we quote spiritual. Sometimes he'll nudge you to do something that's contradictory to what you want to do or your plan. And you be like, no, I have planned to do this and this and this. One, two, and three down on your paper. But he was like, no, I want you to do three, then one, then two. That's the nudging of the Lord. Why? Because he knows what's ahead of you. But if you don't surrender even your plan to God, then you are walking to another way that he's not have called you to walk into. And then guess what? Your grace is frustrated. You frustrated. You out of whack, out of line. You missing. You, in other words, it's just like a clock. That clock going to hit every one of them numbers. Each and every time it go around. But guess what? If the battery don't work on that clock, it ain't going to move at all. So we got to come right back to the place of surrender. Glory to God. Proverbs 30, excuse me, Proverbs 23 and 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. We have let our eyes observe the way that's not the way that the Lord has intended for us to go. He said, look, if you give me your heart, I teach your eyes how to follow. I teach you how to look at the right thing. If you'll surrender your heart unto me, James 4 and 10 said, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. See, you know what? When we get in such a place that we think that we have accomplished or we, we know what's best for us and we keep on going, well, I just feel like, it ain't even based on your feelings. It's based on your submission to what the Lord is saying. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist what's opposing you when we call it the devil, the adversary, and he will flee from you. But we keep on entertaining what we see the enemy showing us, speaking when we should be quiet. We don't know how to study to be quiet. When Paul was talking to those women in those church, 
He was like, listen, shut your lips up sometime. Listen, there was a thing that the men were scholarly and they was being taught a whole bunch of things and the women had not come into that place yet. He said, look, the knowledge that you have is based in your husband. And if you will hold your peace and ask your husband at home, he will reveal unto you the things, the mysteries even that we are talking about in this congregation together. But because there was blurting out and because there was speaking out of turns, he said, study, hush yourself up, study to be quiet. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. Sometimes we've got to hush ourselves up. In other words, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and I began to say, sometimes you have to give yourself a moment before you speak. Let them do what they doing on the other side. Never let that negative pull your positive. Because if you let that negative pull your positive, guess what you going to be? Negative. That's no surrender in you allowing a circumstance or a situation to pull you over into it. When the Lord said, submit yourself to me, I'm going to guide you. Submit yourself to me, I'm going to show you. Submit yourself to me, I'm going to lead you into the place that you are to go. But when we don't submit, we all over the place. I can be honest and transparent that there's been this week and some things I didn't submit to the Father. And it caused a great frustration at the end of the day that I was like, Lord, I can't put up with this. I can't put up with them. I don't know how to, it's almost like I didn't even have a balance. And he's come back to, it's, it's down to your surrender. What, what are you willing to let go of? Hebrews 4 and 16 says this, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. We got some needs. I keep on saying, the Lord kept on saying, and keep on saying to me, there is a need and I'm going to meet the need. But how is he going to meet the need if we don't do the first part? Have confidence and draw to his throne where the grace is. It's a throne of grace, but we will never receive the throne of grace if we don't have confidence, one, that he's not going to move, he's not going to do it, that we may receive mercy. And mercy obtains favor that we may receive not only the grace and the mercy of God, but we will receive the favor of God in the time that we need it. Mm. John 14 and 15 said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And you know, we be thinking about that should not kill, that should not, but there's other commandments that we know. In other words, if we're doing stuff that we know that's a sin to ourself, your own conviction. If you override your own morals, it's a sin. He said, look, if you love me, you won't even sin against yourself. That's big. Woo. When I tell you the Lord will always allow somebody to speak, but you got to go through some things to be able to see, else you'll walk around with an arrogant spirit and think you got everything together in the Lord like no more. I need you to come to the table and I need you to submit all of this to me so that I can direct you in the way that you need to go. Luke 14 and 33, it says, so therefore any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. When we think about renouncing, we're thinking about in spiritual warfare where we're saying renounce this out your life and renounce that out your life. But he said, therefore, if any one of you who does not renounce all that he has, all that you have gathered, all, he said, you cannot even be a disciple of his. So there comes a time that you got to submit you and your will unto the Lord. And he kept on saying, it's a surrendering. And, and, and the thing about it is that flesh be cutting up so bad, you know, within yourself, you, you, you know, as a person, like what you able to gauge, what you able to do or whatever. And then you won't, you won't renounce it. You keep on entertaining it. I'm guilty. Luke 9, 23 said, and he shall say to all, if anyone who come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Key point and follow me. It's like this, you know how we say once saved, always saved. If you, if you not continuing on in the grace, in the mercy, 
and in the development of your faith. The Lord, would, when I begin to look up, you say it's different kinds of levels of surrender. You surrender your heart to God when you are initially um, tell him that, you know, ask him for his, his salvation. And then there's another surrendering where you, um, you, when you, when you build a relationship with him, you, you pull it in closer. There's another, in other words, I know how to build a relationship with you as a friend or you as my mate or you as my um, family member. But the Lord was like, no, this is a much deeper relationship with that. In other words, it's like this. You can have relationship with all these people and spend time with all these people. But remember, he said he's a jealous guy. And then what happened with that? What happens? Your relationship begin to shift. <laughs> and sometimes you don't understand the shifting in the relationships. And that's because the Lord was like, you're too close to them. And you're not close enough to me. Well, I'm going to cause or allow this to happen over here. That person will get sidetracked, busy, doing what they do. You will get whatever. And the Lord will cause there to be a gap. Why? You're too close to each other and not close enough to him. In other words, you begin to tell them your intimate secrets when you used to go and pray and tell the Lord. Ooh. You begin to call them before you even pray because you feel like this is my prayer partner. I got to let them know. No. He is a jealous God and he's saying, listen, there is a place of surrendering that I want you to even lay that. You know what? We'll get so common with each other that we forget about the spiritual concept of the relationship in the beginning, in the first place. Not saying that you're not to have a friend, not saying that you're not supposed to have somebody to confide in. That's even in husband and wife relationship. We feel like we should tell each other everything. Now you better back that up. You better start talking to the father first and say, Lord, is this applicable for this time and this season? We'll get mad. We'll get frustrated. We'll say whatever we want to say, but we ain't really ask God, is this a conversation that you want me to have with this person? I had to tell a friend of mine today, I said, I'm learning how to have a good fight. Sometimes having a good fight is not saying nothing at all. It's not that you um, being passive or passive aggressive or avoidance. It's the fact that God has not released me to touch this matter. And because he has not given me the green light, and touch this matter. I got a surrender this situation to the father said, in other words, like David said, shall I pursue? But we ain't asking him, shall I, shall I pursue this? Or God, do you want me to just sit back? Do you want me to just ponder? Do you want me to just put this on the shelf? Do you? How do you want me to handle this? Do you even want me to touch this at all? It's been times that I walked out of my office because I heard a conversation and I felt like I had the answer to the situation and probably did. But guess what? The Lord was letting me know at that time, that's not your business. And so what I had to do, come back and submit myself to his will. In other words, I had to be willing to cause my flesh to turn around and go sit down and to complete the task that I already was working on. Because he didn't call me to their situation. He called me to focus on the things that was before me. But because of what I heard, like an itching ear, many in the last days will go after what they hear. Didn't mean that it was for them. But because they heard something, they begin to go after the things that they heard. It had nothing to do with them. It had nothing to do with the plan of God for their life. But we got to be careful that we don't walk in another man's lane from what the Lord has called us to walk into. There's still a pulling. And it's like the enemy is like, the adversary is like, whatever can he dangle before your face to see if you will go after it. It reminds me of a cartoon, hallelujah, where they had that little carrot. He was always after the carrot, always after the carrot, always after the carrot. He would do anything to get his pride. And that's how we are sometimes not realizing that the decisions that we make 
It's based on our surrendering to the will of Lord of God. And we're not willing to surrender everything. And that's why the Lord keeps on saying the same thing in a different context. He wants our heart, but he wants our heart in every area of our life. He wants our heart, glory to God, where it means that sometimes what you will might not be what the Father will, but you got to be willing to let go your will so that you can surrender to his. <laughs> Oh, he talked about this today to me. He said, I'm trying to get you to a place of spiritual enlightenment. I'm trying to get you a place where you can recognize my presence when it's not prevalent. I'm trying to get you to be in a situation where you can see bad all around, but can you discern my will? Because it's about your surrender. It's about what you submit yourself to. If you submit yourself to every chaotic thing, then that's what you're going to see. But if you learn how to submit yourself into what God is saying, this is the way I want you to walk into. This is the pathway I'm taking you down. He said, this don't come a part of your spiritual growth. And some things we've been going through year after year after year after year. And we like, we keep on going in that same circle. Why? We have not renounced it. We have not put it aside, but we have entertained our flesh so much that now that the presence of the Lord is here, we're struggling with how do we surrender this thing to him? He said, he, he said the enemy is coming after your belief and your values. But what do you believe and what do you value? What is it? The, what is the solid sound foundation that you're standing on? And we dig, we stand on the word of God. Ooh, Really? Because the word is not going to lead you contrary to the will of God. But when you know that you're outside of the will of God, that means your surrender has not been effective or you're not doing it. He said, spend, he said, find time to talk to not your neighbor, your cousin, your friend. He said, find time to talk to God. He said, find time to talk to your father. Find time to talk to the Lord. Pray. And then, you know, even in the reading, sometimes we like, I'm I'm a person who I do this for practice so that I can remember. You Sometimes you have to put little things in place so you can get it. For me, a daily Bible reading or a Bible reading plan for the year, it just helps me stay in the word. But sometimes, like I'm off right now, but, but those are times that the Lord was like, no, I'm going to need you to go here. You can't be so tied to one thing. That when the spirit of the Lord is leading you into something else and you're like, well, I just got to do this. I got to do this right here first. No, your surrender got to be so much so that when he speak another thing, you're not so caught up in your past thing that you can't let go over there and pursue after what he's speaking for your now. Spiritual needs like giving, like volunteering, like community service. And the Lord's been really dealing with me about that, about going out into the community and community service, not as a church, but as an individual. What are you giving back on? In other words, we keep on receiving, receiving, receiving because he's a good guy and he he meets all of our needs. But he was like, well, what you going to give back on? OK, you get on here and get a little broadcast. You get over here and give this, that and the other. You get over here and you give a dollar over here and dollar there. But outside of that, what you doing? Can you... Humble yourself enough. Take time enough to sacrifice in your surrender to go to that place he's telling you to go to. It might be the prison. It might be what well, it might be somebody else's house that's less fortunate than you. He might ask you to go clean somebody else's house. He might ask you to go close somebody else's wardrobe. He might ask you to do anything. He might ask you to go to that shelter. Like he's been ask, telling me. To go to the shelter. I don't know which one I'm going to, but I'm going to one very soon because I feel the need in my spirit. And sometimes we praying, God meet the need of the people. And God said, you the answer, get out and do it. Your surrender got to be so much so that you're willing to go outside of your normal that God can get the glory out of your life. He said, we need to do this more. We need to talk about our faith, not only to other believers, but to our friends, that don't believe like you believe, but we too afraid to speak out and say different stuff. 
because we don't want, you know, we want to deal with all that. Because you know they living like that and you don't want to deal. No, you, you got to speak about your faith. And sometimes you can just give them a good old testimony about the things that God has already done for you. And they was like, oh, God did that? Sometimes it's just as simple as that. Sometimes it's just to say, you know, I just bless God. He gave me another day today. Oh, you do? Well, how so? Then I open up a door of a conversation. But guess what? That's the introduction into them to God. And before you know it, they be ex excited and they be celebrating God in the morning time like you do. Why are you so happy? What do you mean? I mean, why not be happy? Because they don't have no peace is what they're trying to tell you. But because you can't surrender or you haven't surrendered, you can't hear that. Somebody can be real, real nasty, real, real negative. And the only thing you can see, because you're not surrendered to the spirit, is you can see they nasty and they negative. But what if the Lord is saying, I need you to experience with them. I need you to sit amongst them. I need you to be so surrendered to me that you're not worried about nobody else going to say, because you sit amongst them. Homongers. He told Hosea to go marry Goma. Who was Hosea? The man of God to take his good old holy self and go marry a harlot, a prostitute. What? You know what a prostitute do. You know that her heart is not going to be for what you. Because what? She like to do what she do. And sometimes they don't mean they like to do it. That means they just been carpet a lifestyle, but they need to know a different lifestyle. But if you never rub against her shoulder, you never touch her, you never speak to her as a woman, passing another woman and telling her that the Lord still love her. How she going to know? How she going to know? How she going to feel? Because look, we, we are all shaped by our environment and the things that we have experienced. And if that's all I know from the age of 13, that's all I know how to do. I don't know anything else, but with you, with your experience and your God, if you will take time to surrender to God, I guarantee you, he'll allow you to stop and talk. He'll allow you to impart the word of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and the word of life. This man gave his testimony about how the Lord had kept on dealing with him about going to talk to this guy. He said the guy wasn't clean. The guy was everything that he was. In. in other words, he felt like he was well put together. He felt like, you know, all this was going on. But eventually, he said the nudging got so strong, got so strong, but he was embarrassed. And he didn't know how to approach the guy instead of just saying, hey, that's all it takes sometimes. What ended up happening is that after a while, the guy was no longer there. So now he's inquiring to other people that he wouldn't talk to about where's the guy at, where the guy was gone forever. We're not even going to talk about the circumstances that led him to be gone forever. But he missed his opportunity to share the word of the Lord that the Lord had put down in the basement of his spirit because he wasn't surrendered to God and he was disobedient. In your surrender comes an obedience to God. In other words, what we talk about, Pastor Charlene, partial obedience is still disobedience. It could be somebody very life at stake, but because we just so full of us and not surrendered unto the Lord, we miss an opportunity and somebody lose their life based on the fact that we didn't obey what God has said. He began to tell us that the Lord came back and began to minister to him and said, had he not done, had he done what he told him to do, then the person's life would have been spared. That's serious that you think, and the problem with us, we become so callous because we see crime, we see murder, we see all this stuff, and we're like, oh, poor them, because it hasn't hit home to you yet. Well, what you going to do with a knock on your door? And you have not been obedient. And you have not been surrendered to the things that the Lord has called you to surrender to. Talk about your faith to other believers, to friends and unbelievers. Spiritual habits. He said, develop your spiritual habits. And this was a thing that he, that he rebuked me on. I used to journal. I put it down for various reasons. Didn't have time or didn't take time, to be honest. 
And then in that, when you get into a, a habit of doing those things, did you feel, I feel like the Lord is saying this today, write it down. A couple of hours go by, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. Wait a minute, I can't remember. Get your pad and your pencil, a pen, whatever you take. Type it out. That would be me. I can't write real good. <laughs> Another whole story with it. But write it out. Then in your quiet time, take that back, that into the presence of the Lord and submit those things to him. Lord, you, you dealt with me with this. You told me to change this. You told me to speak to this person and do this. You said buy this person lunch. You said this and this. And then begin to do those things that the Lord had told you to do in those times of journaling. And look, it don't have to be every day. It could be once a week, but set aside some time. It could be your prayer time. You, your prayer time is nothing, but you're not going to get nowhere if you don't spend time in the presence of the Lord. How you expect for God to reveal unto you, to show you, and we're like, Lord, speak to me. Lord, use me. But you don't surrender yourself or make yourself available for him to use. Serve others. We talked about that. Practice prayer. Sometimes you got to practice it. Practice it till you get it right. You ain't got to pray around nobody. Pray by yourself. In other words, the Bible talk about going to your closet and close the door. He's not literally talking about a closet and a door, which some of us do do that. We're talking about getting to a private place where there's no one at and pray that he may direct you. He may lead you. He may heal you. He may reveal himself unto you. Those are small things that you do when you surrender. Because look, we got to break old habits. We, my old habit, coming home in the afternoon time. I know if I sit down, ain't nothing going to get done. But that's a habit. Well, I, Lord, I would have read, but I fell asleep. That's an excuse. Keep a daily or weekly journal and then track your relationship. In other words, when you fall in love with somebody, be a whomever you fall in love with. You'll, you'll write down their favorite color, their first name, their last name, what they drive. If you get real deep, you'll make a song up about them. you just gone on in la-la land. you just be doing the most. But now you have an opportunity to do that with the Father, and you don't do none of that. Woo! Lord, help us. Pastor Charlene laughing, y'all. She must have wrote a song about somebody. <laughs> or somebody wrote a song about her one. Okay, that's when you're real deep. But surrender spiritually. Take all of you, all your thoughts, all your ideas, all your things, and submit it to God. I don't know, like, what else to say because of his sovereignty, my inability to express um, just to totally give yourself over to the Father. He's speaking by his spirit. He's speaking, glory to God, your next. And sometimes like, I don't know what it is for me to do. And the Lord was like, I'm, I'm answering you. But you can't hear that because you, you hear all these other extra activities outside, extra things, extra relationship, extra stuff that you entertain he was like and I, I, i'm pulling that same rope trying to pull you back over to the winning side as you surrender to god that's when he will be able to reveal himself even more unto you and to direct your path on the way that he will have you to go we always talk about him being a light unto our path god the lord is a light up to our path in other words he lighting it up wherever i go so it, i know exactly where to go but if you don't take that time out to walk in the way or to put yourself in that position, how do you expect for God to give you what you need? In other words, he He, he already know what we need before we even ask or pray. And he is waiting, your God, for us to, to set ourselves into a place. Your surrender going to come with your belief. Your surrender going to come with your will. Your surrender going to come with the way that you carry yourself. Your, so you going to know when you when you complete the surrender because the things that you desired is going to change to the spiritual things of God, to helping somebody else meet the need, 
to deny yourself. And Jesus Christ himself would lay up on that cross the greatest sacrifice to show unto us what giving your life for what you love really means. He gave us his everything. Now, I don't know about how much you're giving my whole life to a per a, one one person. He gave it to, he gave it up his life for the whole world. What great sacrifice. He not asking us to give our whole life for the whole world in the, in the volume that he did, but he is asking us to give you our whole life for the whole world. You can affect one person and with the power, with the wisdom, with the knowledge and the understanding of God. And they can turn this one world upside down for the glory of God. It's all about what you will to do and your surrender and your obedience to Christ. I don't even have nothing else to say, but surrender your all unto him. We can go on for a long time. I got the strength and I don't have a voice today. But what I do have is the spirit and the spirit of God that rests in me is asking, pleading and begging that you will get into a place that you will surrender your all to the Lord. Not what mama say, not what daddy say, not even their relationship. Back in the Old Testament, they began to say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But no, today we should say, my God. <laughs> it got to become personal i remember that my mama prayed and my daddy prayed and i seen god do this no well what did he do with what did he do when you prayed building relationship surrendering your all to god you need to know god is going to come through for you in every aspect of your life because of your relationship with him he gonna meet the need of his people when his people surrender when his people cry out to him when his people seek him, when his people search out for him, and when his people pursue peace with all men, those are the things that he's looking for. Those are the people that he's coming back for. He's coming back for his remnant, but yet he calls us his bride. <laughs> we are the bride of Christ, but he's looking for something in return. No, it's not with works that we obtain his favor. Is with your faith in the things that you give unto him. And you believe in him to come through and not only your situation, but the people that's connected to you. As you pray, as you seek, as you intercede, as you go forth on the thing, even the things that you desire. Some of us have a desire that we have it. We just put it on the shelf because we feel like it's just been too long and God not gonna move. But the reason why the Lord has not moved is because we have not surrendered everything to him. Even the plans, even the instructions. Lord, how am I going to get the instructions for this? Or how am I do this? I don't know. I don't have a plan. I personally don't have a plan. But he has the plans. And he's going to reveal it to those that he know this diligence seeking after him. It's in your seek. It's in your surrender. It's in your obedience. It's in your submission to the plan and the will of the Father. We love you. God bless you. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you walk in and you fulfill everything that God has called you to fulfill. Our purpose is not just to be heard, just to be another person, just saying things across the airways. Our purpose is that something in your spirit, man, will come alive and that you would basically allow the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you and to instruct you into the things that he has called you to do. That's our mission. That's our purpose to unite something that's in the inside of you that you can see through a practical way that God is still on the throne and that he's still speaking to and through his people and he still has purpose and plan for your life. And a surrender is not only glory to God that, that all this other stuff happened, but it's not only that you build relationship with people, but you build relationship relationship with the father and that you know that without a shadow of a doubt that he is the one that's going to make it happen for you god bless you amen thank you father